So I figured today we're going to have ourselves a little conversation about the vaccine, hopefully to address the pandemic. And we're going to have a little bit of an uncomfortable conversation because I'm going to have to break down some very unfortunate truths, some very harsh realities about what's going on right now. Now, for the sake of trying to make sure that this video actually gets spread as much as possible, I'm not going to say the big C word. Instead, I'll just point over here and you'll see a real quick clip of me holding up a button which I press which says... Okay, so, moving on. Ever since the beginning of the pandemic, people have been saying, we need a vaccine, we need a vaccine. The only way to address this whole situation is we're going to have to get a vaccine, everybody's going to have to get vaccinated, and that is what's going to get us back to normal. And that's the big word there, normal. Everybody wants to get back to normal. Nobody wants to be stuck indoors anymore. Nobody wants to not be able to go and have you know, their, their favorite meal at their restaurant. They want to be able to go see movies again. They want to go, I don't know, roller skating. <laughs> Whatever your idea of normal was right now probably ain't it. And if it is, you're probably really lucky. Now, this has also been highly politicized. Things like, well, would you even take the vaccine if it came out under Trump or something like that? I don't trust this new administration, blah, 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 blah. All, all politicized nonsense has nothing to do with it. So we're not even going to address it here. We're going to talk about what a vaccine is supposed to do. And we're going to talk specifically about herd immunity, which also I'm going to try and break the habit of saying herd immunity and instead use what scientists prefer, and that's herd protection. Because immunity... It also might not be very accurate in this instance. We'll get there. Now, first, we have to understand exactly what a vaccine is for. A vaccine isn't necessarily just for one person. It's also for a population. True, on a biological scale, a vaccine is designed to try and help confer a type of immunity. Um, in, in this case, empowering the immune system to be able to fight off whatever it is it's designed for, etc., 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 etc. But that's not all. The main reason for a vaccination program is to try and confer enough immunity in a given population that we then have herd protection. Now, herd protection is the idea that enough people are incapable of catching whatever the virus is, that in essence it cannot spread, there cannot be an outbreak, or if an outbreak does happen, it's in such a small scale, it's not likely to then become a super spread event and start branching out all over the place, which is what's happening all over our country right now. So well, we, we need to have a certain type of herd protection for COVID-19, right? So a basic idea. Here's where it gets a little confusing. Quite a few people have started to push this idea that we can establish herd protection if we just let enough people naturally get infected. And if enough people just get infected, then they get immunity, and then that will be good enough. It's good enough, right? I mean, if we got that, do we even need a vaccine? Makes sense to me, said only people who don't know what they're talking about. We have, to date, never established a natural herd protection from a natural occurring virus. Never. It's never happened. And the part of this that's really, really troubling, and the part of this that's very, very concerning, is that the idea of doing this is to basically succumb to the virus, to be like, you know what? You win. You win. We're, we're just going to let as many people who are not at risk of dying go out, live their lives, get naturally infected, etc., 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 and we're just going to build it up. Again, that's never happened. We've never managed to do it as a society. I mean, after all, we still get chicken pox, and chicken pox have been having chicken pox parties, which is a disgusting idea, for decades and decades. Uh, we've never been able to get rid of it. Not through those means. That's not how these things work. Here's also where it gets a little bit troublesome. So each virus has a different, what we call, threshold that we need to establish with a herd protection program in order to be protected. Now, this virus requires, well, it's kind of up in the air right now, but it's largely agreed upon the worst number is somewhere around 70% of a herd protection, which means 70% of the population has to have an immunity. It has to be vaccinated. 
And we've already established that we're not going to be able to do it naturally. So here's where it gets really spooky, okay? In order to have a herd protection for measles, it's about 95%. 95%. Because measles is just that infectious. Just that infectious. And you can see that our vaccination program really does work. We don't have a massive outbreak of measles like we do with so if anything, that's a really good evidence that vaccination absolutely works. It absolutely fucking works. So why do we have such a pushback against it? Well, take your pick. And just as a side note, that 70% is largely contingent on the United States of America. Various different socioeconomic and, and current status of outbreak numbers can all be factors into it being either higher or lower. In fact, some countries that have gotten very good lockdown efforts in place that percentage is quite low, quite low. And they really wouldn't need to do that much to protect against further outbreaks because they're doing it right. And if you're asking if I'm saying that the United States is not doing it right, that is exactly what I'm saying, yes. 100%, we have not been doing it right for a while. But just think about those numbers, though, for a second. You know, 70% in order to get a herd protection from... But... 95 for measles and we have managed to control measles and what that means is is that it should be easier to make once it's available a vaccination schedule a vaccination program uh what what, what is what did, what did trump call it operation warp speed uh to try and get these doses out as quick as possible and make sure people are protected but we're gonna have to have vigilance in trying to convince people that they need to take the vaccine, that they can't just simply operate as if they, they're just going to confer a natural herd immunity because that's not how it's going to work. It's not. And one thing that's even more troubling is one of the reasons why we vaccinate is because there are people who can't vaccinate. Young children with autoimmune disorders, old people that might be on medications that will interact badly with it, uh, people with random diseases or certain types of allergies that render vaccination impossible. So we, we get our herd protection game going on so that they're protected too. That's the whole point. Those people are also some of the highest risk brackets for becoming a lethal situation. So even more so, that's a reason why we need to do this. It's incredibly important. Now, here's the part of the video that I'm really not happy to have to tell you about. Um, there is another unfortunate reality that we have to face. Even if, even if we manage to make a very effective vaccine and we launch a very, very effective vaccination program, to get as many people as possible vaccinated as quickly as possible, we still have this one unfortunate aspect. Is also part of a larger family known as... And that is also the same group that sometimes causes seasonal colds. It's a highly mutatable virus, which means that yes, maybe we can make an effective vaccine, but how well is that going to work in the future? How long will it impart an immunity? How long will the things that we're doing right this second and hoping for in the future, how long will they last? Is there a possibility it could become a seasonal thing? This is one of the reasons why, as much as I want to be hopeful, as much as I, I am pro-vaccine technology, what I am even more pro is pro-science literacy and making people understand what the value of a vaccine can be. Making sure people understand exactly what we can achieve with these types of things and why we have, we have to believe in them. We have to take, to take these ideas to heart. We have to make vaccination not a question anymore. It should not be, should I take this vaccine? It should be, why am I not taking this vaccine? Because if this continues, this could be a totally drastic change to how we fundamentally live on the planet. Look, everybody wants to get back to normal. Everybody wants to get back to what they understand as normal. But what if this is the new normal? What if this is something that we're always going to have to deal with? 
What if this is something that just isn't really going to go away? We're just going to have to learn a new way to live despite it. So we have to start trusting in science. We cannot just blindly brush these things off anymore. And if you've noticed on my channel that I've been getting a little bit more strict about saying that science has to be trusted because this is the best thing that we have, that, that's not on accident. Because we live in unprecedented times where these things are going to start really fundamentally changing the way we live. We now have all around the world and it impacts almost every single person on the planet. Climate change is happening, whether we want to believe in it or not. <laughs> These are things that will change the face of our planet, our world, and our lives. So we need to start getting realistic about it. We need to stop making excuses for why people... It's okay for people to just blindly dismiss these things. And we gotta face our harsh realities, and we gotta do it together. Now I'm gonna enjoy this beautiful... Oregon Wilderness a little bit longer uh, and I will see you back in the world. From my family to yours, take care of yourselves. See you next time.